a lot more meaningful when we ask questions. So, um, so good morning. I'm Dr. Roseanne Kanahaj, um, and I'm a psychologist, but I'm also an entrepreneur, um, and I have multiple businesses um, in different realms, including real estate and digital areas and whatnot. And um, you know, this is a time for us to offer our services and help others. And I am a healer and a helper. And so not just a psychologist who does all this fun brain-based stuff, but I also mentor and help a lot of people and always have. Um, and actually one of my businesses uh, that I will be doing is full on, not, not here, but in mental health, um, mentoring people to have holistic mental health practices. Um, that's in development because people need help with that. So I'm here to be of service and help people in this time of unprecedented crisis. Um, and uh, as you'll see, I have kind of diverse skill set, and many of you do. So please offer, you know, insight, ask questions, um, and you know, thank you for Kim Bova, the Ridgefield Chamber. I'm a long-term member. Um, to being able to have this platform, we came up with this idea, and uh, you know, I'm here to ask questions. My email is going to be in here. If somebody has a question, um, happy to help. So uh, I am actually, you know, gonna get started, um, and I'm gonna share my screen, uh, which will probably, let's see if it will um, allow me to answer questions. Yes, it will. So let me go through um, and do this. Hold on one second. Um, and, oop. Never mind, wrong thing. Um, here we are. Okay, so my chat box is not up um, in this. So Kim will can see the chat box and she can ask questions. Got it, Kim? Scroll down on the bottom yep. of your screen, click it, and when yep. you click chat box, it will show up on the right. I so, see it again. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So I'm a psychologist, I have an office here in Ridgefield. A lot of you know me and um, I'm grateful and you know to be here and offer support um, to all of you. So we're all finding our new normal and this is new and uncharted. <laughs> um, so you know, kind of what does that mean? That we're all sort of flying by the seat of our pants, which a lot of us, including me, Miss Type A, um, is uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, and you know, but it doesn't mean we can't make it through it and even potentially thrive. Um, I have shared some of my things that I'm doing in here, but I also have lots of examples of what other people are doing. I'd love to hear what people are doing and like create a dialogue of like, you know, either help, I don't know what the heck I'm doing or, Hey, I'm doing this and this is what's working. Um, so I, we have that. So you know, with all this anxiety, and I want to talk about anxiety, not just because I'm a mental health professional, but on all of these business things, it's the number one thing everyone is talking about. So they say that upwards of 40% of the U.S. population will get coronavirus, but 100% of everybody is feeling anxious. So it's something that we can't ignore because anxiety does interfere with your thinking. And some of us business owners leaped into action and some of us are immobilized and sort of feel like a deer in the headlight. Guess what? Both is okay. And don't let like us type A people make you feel bad. Um, you are doing the best that you can. This is about teaching you some ways to um, interact with your employees and your community, AKA your customers differently so that you don't have to feel so overwhelmed and uncertain, right? Um, and I'm not talking about the loans and all that other stuff. I hope that you are accessing that um, and doing that for yourself. Because guess what? So am I. So uh, we need to do that. So who isn't stressed? This just came out in the Harvard Business School um, that small business owners are basically, you know, we're, we're the ones really taking the hit, right? 77% uh, are very worried about the economic impact um, 54 predict a recession and 49% say that a customer demand is down. These, this is real. We, we can't say that it's not real because it is. Um, but what you can do is what we're going to talk about it so that you can feel empowered and have some direction to know what to do. 
Um, so our emotions are real, they're valid, not just because I'm a therapist, but I just want to acknowledge like, you know, what you're feeling is really like a grief process and that we're grieving what was before, right? You know, um, for my for myself and our center, we treat people like literally all over the world. People fly into us. Maybe you guys don't know that, but right here in Ridgefield, Connecticut, people fly in all the time to see me. Um, and you know, because I do something very different and very unique, so much so that our phones ring off the hook, and we have people who just answer phone calls for new people. That's how much our phone rings. Well, guess what? They're not ringing right now. Um, they're ringing a little bit, but not like what it was, right? So we've had to pivot and do things differently. So I didn't grieve that the phones weren't ringing like dozens of times in a day. I was like, what are we going to do? Like, first of all, what am I going to do with that staff? How am I going to change that? Um, and that's unique to my business. And we did do some things, but you just have to start. What I want to say that with anything in life, when you feel stuck, which again is valid. You can't live there though, right? Um, you have to move towards acceptance of what it is. You've got to take one action. Just one action starts moving things forward. It's very, very powerful when you do that. And you could add a lot of layers into that and in that you know you can visualize what you want to have happen. You know, we're visualizing new things, right? So um, there's going to be action during Corona and then there's post action, right? So like hopefully you know, what's going to happen after the, you know, after Corona to me is there's going to be a lot of people looking for services and, and care and a lot of cool things. And you need to, we're going to talk about why it's more important than ever to stay connected with those people. So, you know, what are you going to do to survive? That's one thing. And that's a reality, right? And then some people will actually thrive during this time. Um, and that may feel like, what, what do you mean? We're going to show you some examples of people that are actually thriving, like they pivoted, um, and kudos to them. And it's not too late for you to do that for yourself. So right now as business owners or as a leader in a business, right, whether you're employed by somebody else, our leadership is more important than ever. Um, I actually have never worked Anybody who knows me knows I work a lot. Um, I normally work about 100 hours a week. Um, and I have my life set up so I can do that. I also um, am paleo. I don't have any sugar. I don't have any wheat. I exercise every day. I meditate. I do neurofeedback and biofeedback. So like I have impeccable care. also take a boatload of supplements. Um, and so I do a lot of things so that my brain and body can handle that. What I'm going to tell you right now is that I'm sure a lot of you are feeling exactly the way that I'm feeling, that we're working so hard, but the ROI isn't the same. Um, and guess what? It's part of what it is. So, and I'm also doing a tremendous amount of support for my staff. We have staff of 18, um, and I'm doing a lot of support for them more than I, than I ever have. And it's because leadership is really important. So I want to talk to you about something I developed called the corporate leader method. Um, it's called listen, evaluate, adapt, develop, execute, and reach. And we're going to go through all of those so that you can feel empowered to make a difference. Um, so the first point, point is really, really, really ridiculously important. You got to listen right now right? So even though we're all have this Corona anxiety, we have to listen to what are our employees saying? What do they need? What does our, what do our customers and community need, right? So, you know, your employees, right, are probably concerned about their job, right? And maybe, maybe not. Some of these businesses right now are actually hiring, right? So, you know, we, we actually are hiring position right now, um, that we started before and we're going to continue to look for that person um, and I actually had a poll from different parts of my organization to help me with different things I was like who can do this and you know people volunteered and I was able to keep positions right so we already had a part of our business that's virtual we'll talk about that like you know what can you do um, you know what do your employees so if they are working, what are they saying? What do they need? What are concerns about the job, like the actual function of the job? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so, so important right now. And then, you know, your community. Like, so 
what are your customers saying, right? So I'd be curious right now if anybody wants to pop in the chat, like what are your customers saying, right? Because financial concerns are coming up for them, but also relative to your business, like what are your customers saying? So my customers, every customer is saying this, they're anxious. So anxiety is a big, big worry about everything, right? So that uncertainty, um, you know, the, the fear of that unknown is really unsettling for people. Um, I even have heard some of my friends, like, you know, one of my friends who's, a, you know, a business owner that does very well, has high profitability, was like, oh, I'm going to start renegotiating my contracts. And I was like, but you're making money. That's like completely, to me, felt unethical. Um, I was like, you need to save that for things, you know, going, going sour for you. So people are making a lot of fear-based decisions. And so, um, you know, anxiety and supporting their worries, right? Um, you know, what are your customers exactly worried about and what do they need right now? Um, and, you know, for your, you know, business, you have to prioritize the needs and your critical operations for both what your customers need and your employees. Um, and we'll talk about that and, and some of the examples of that. So right now, one of the most important things you need to do is stay connected. So staying connected to your employees and community is more important now than ever, right? So everybody is home and they are only connected virtually right now. So that is, um, you know, that is a way for you to, to be connected to them, right? And so um, right now, one of the things that we're doing differently here at Dr. Rosanna Associates is we're actually having daily meetings. So we didn't have big old daily meetings with all the staff, but guess what? We're having them now. Um, and why, right? So we are doing so many different things right now. Um, and I should just say in, in my business, I have a, you know, a three-year business plan um, and we also developed another company called the Global Institute of Children's Mental Health and sort of become the arc of our, our brand. Um, and for those of you who don't, don't know me, I do a lot of um, media, you know, I do a lot of um, press and print and, and broadcast. And my goal is to change the way we view and treat children's mental health. And <clears throat> our center helps you in that, but we want to really have a more global reach and really teach parents that, you know, you, you don't have to take a pill. Like there's actually things that you can do to reverse your kids' issues. Um, it's often surprising to people. So we had all these business plans in place and we are still committed to them. But what's happening is we're holding the vision, but we're changing the way to the vision. So that's really important. Let me say that again. You're going to hold your vision, but you might have to change those plans to the vision. And so a lot of our daily meetings are like, what, what the heck are we doing right now? Like, we're working on this goal. You know, is it still part of the vision, right? You, you don't want to abandon your vision. Everything you do to your business should be authentic, right? Um, yes, you have to monetize. There has to be an ROI. But if you, the most successful businesses are doing things that are, really, you know, part of their core values, like, you know, what's your mission? So not, you know, and, and it's really important to identify those things so people can find you. Um, but our daily meetings are for us to keep communication real clear. Um, because as I think you are experiencing as well as I am, we're trying different things and some things land well and some things don't. But one of the things that I learned at, like right now, when I hopped on this webinar, I was like, let me just give a quick Zoom of what you need, you know, explanation. Um, I've been using Zoom for years. Um, and it's so, you know, there's all these memes about Zoom right now that are absolutely hysterical about people's first times on Zoom and whatnot. But it's a real thing. Like, um, I helped somebody else do a webinar the other day. And I said to the tech guy, because I could tell he didn't know what he was doing. I said, how long have you been using Zoom? He said, two days. And I said, listen, I'm here to help you. You know, I can help you set this up. And he was like, oh, thank goodness. You know, and his job was to run this big training the other day. He just didn't. So make sure if you're asking, if you're staying connected virtually with your employees, whether you're using things like Zoom or Slack, you know, we already had a company dashboard. We use Basecamp. 
these are things that um, are great communication tools, but you can't just toss them to your employees and say, here you go. Um, you know, <laughs> it, find a YouTube video, send it to them, you know, say, hey, we're going to do a practice session today at one o'clock. Um, sounds so simple, but I can't tell you how great that is. And it's a way to show your employees that you value them and that you want to um, stay connected to them and, sh and help them, right? So a lot of people are um, not technology savvy and um, it's important to do that. So, okay, let's talk about messaging. So me messaging, do we have any questions or comments, Kim, or anything right now? I saw we've got uh, one from Lounsbury House. Uh, she says most of her clients are brides to be. Uh, they have very hopeful attitudes all around rescheduling versus cancellation, and she's working hard to convey positivity. And yeah. I can imagine as an you know an event venue how hard this is right now with the distancing. Yeah, and, and it also ties into my comment. Um, through the chamber, what I'm hearing from businesses is the single biggest anxiety is just not knowing how long this is going to last, trying to make plans for after when we have no idea yet when yeah. after is going to start. So, yeah. absolutely. So, we will let's talk about that. And also, let's talk about some fun ideas when we get to the brainstorming section. I would mm -hmm. love to talk about some fun ideas for the Lounsbury House because I Ooh. have some good ones. So um, <laughs> um, I'm also, um, I also didn't tell people, I'm actually part of an incredibly elite group of um, about 63 of us uh, wellness professionals all over the world. It's a highly vetted group of some of the most um, well-known wellness professionals in the world. And what my favorite part, besides get to be with my friends, um, we get together every, every 90 days, is these are real serious entrepreneurs. And so I have the ability and the experience that we've, we've done, we've been doing all this stuff for each other and we're getting together and we're gonna talk about some ways to help each other, um, which I think is a great idea. Cause sometimes when you're by yourself, you don't think of stuff and you just need a buddy to brainstorm ideas with. And I got together with my five best business besties on Sunday and we did a Zoom meeting with each other. And wow, we had some great stuff that came out of it. And I had a light bulb moment and I was like, I shouldn't be doing this, I shouldn't be doing that. So it was great. And, and we're really close to each other. So we are super straight with each other. And um, we also feel very comfortable to be able to say, I'm not doing that, you know, cause you gotta do what's always authentic to you. So, so right now everybody's going through this and whether it's your employees or your um, tribe, I like to call my community, my tribe, they need to know you got their back and it's going to come through your messaging and your emails and your social and whatnot. So you have to present with empathy and transparency. So it's very interesting what people are doing and not doing in your emails. Cause you're probably like me about two weeks ago, you were getting 10 or 15 COVID-19 emails a day. Um, and they virtually ceased, right? Just like Delta Airlines and America Airlines seem to be the last two that seem to be sending me something like every day. So with your employees, like I was super upfront with my employees, like this is what's going to happen. This is what I'm going to focus on. This, these people are furloughed because they can't do their job. Like really, really upfront, you know? Um, you know, like, hey, if I don't get this paycheck loan, um, then everybody's going to be put on pause for a little bit, you know, like really, really upfront in a very professional way, in a very transparent way. Um, I have a one um, slide of my three-year business plan on one slide. So everybody in my organization has already seen that. They know what our vision is. And so I was able to pull that out and was like, okay, here's what we're doing. It sounds so simple um, and yet complex, but it's, just a very powerful thing. So, you know, this is really an opportunity for you, whether it's with your employees or your community, build trust, right? So always keep your messages kind and thoughtful. Don't roll out some bizarre sales campaign right now. Like if you're doing a sales campaign, um, it's got to be thoughtful and you can't ignore COVID, right? Like 
has any, you know, like, has anybody gotten some bizarre sales things right now? Because I actually have, what are you doing? Like, you're going to annoy people. People don't want to hear that. You know, keep your marketing current. If you have somebody doing your marketing or you've scheduled all your social posts, like, take it down. Like, you know, so, for example, on April 2nd was um, National Autism Day. So, like, I still wanted to, to do that because there's a huge, you know, a lot of my mamas, have autistic kids and I wanted to honor that but I still had to bring in you know coronavirus in that post just to so people knew that I wasn't like pre-scheduling that right um you know stay on brand don't be doing something totally different like okay the Lounsbury house doing weddings like you know and events like don't bring up something totally obscure if it's not already tied to your brand it doesn't mean you can't bring in different things but keep it to your brand and offer value right um so and when i mean value i mean information so i'm going to just show you mine and these are three of my most popular posts right now um and so uh i i I have somebody, I have Mac Media, who's a Richfield Chamber member. They help me um, with my posts. But really, I had been doing it all myself until like February 1st because I love social. It's a great way to connect. And I know my tribe. So I want you to see what I know about what my tribe needed. So they want to know, they're very nervous about their kids. So we work with all ages, but predominantly about 65% of our population is age 25 and under. And they wanted to know signs of anxiety. This was like surprising to me that even though I talk about anxiety all the time, this was a really popular post, right? And this is organic. I didn't boost it. I didn't do anything. This simple mental health checklist and then some simple tips. Um, simple, simple, simple. This is my tribe right so this is what they needed to hear so i want you to ask the question right now and i want you to write this down for yourself what does your tribe want to hear so first of all you have to know your avatar like who's your avatar right so my number one avatar is uh, a mom right so it's a mom typically in her 40s and 50s i have lots of other types of clients but that's my number one avatar and they typically have a kid with something and it's a kid of any age so I have to provide content and, and whatnot. And guess what? I love those people. I want to help them. And everybody who, who hangs out with me knows that I just absolutely adore the people that I work with. And, um, and if somebody's fresh and, and inappropriate or whatever, I cancel you as clients as it right in my, my form. So, um, you know, a lot of love and we really give a lot of TLC um, to people. So here's another post from something called Razor. And so what they did, you know, they have gaming, but, you know, so it's very easy to promote this business right now. And it just says stay home, game on. And um, they have a boatload of followers, 5.3 million followers, you know, um, and you don't have to have a ton of followers. Again, this is about connecting with your tribe. Um, and, you know, they just said like, okay, and then they mentioned that they're helping people. We're doing a limited run of this poster and giving the proceeds to fight against COVID. So they're like showing they're good right now. You want to be pro-social. Um, and then just, just a couple of posts. So, and it's, and when I say staying connected, again, it's not just on social. It's also your emailing. If you want to go next level and place something actually on your website, like we have a separate page, like a lander, but I don't have it on the front of my website. I am offering a quarantine kit for people. We put some really cool stuff on it, like a 14-day um, recipe guide. Like we, we went above and beyond. So it's about offering value to people. And why is that important? Because they're going to remember you and come back to you when this is over. We don't know when this is over. It's outside of our control, but we can control this moment right now. And that means you can do things. You can offer value. Who on your team can help you? Um, and you can offer them sales. You know, you can give them like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about that. So, um, you know, let them know what you're doing. If you haven't already, you're sanitizing biz, you know, procedures and what's happening in your business. Is it open? Is it closed? Like I, I connect with my people and I'm like, okay, I thought we were planning on reopening on April 1. That was, you know, a month ago. And then, you know, now I'm like, okay, we don't know, but this is what we are doing. 
Um, and we technically can stay open, but I was like, we've got to consider our staff safety and other people's safety. So, you know, letting them know, and I gave them alternatives. They had questions about would they lose their treatment efficacy? You know, again, answer your questions, invite dialogue with your community so you know. You're not going to know what your community needs if you don't ask questions. Ask on social, what do you need help with right now? Send an email out, can I help you with anything? Or if you're thinking of making an offer, you know, like say, would you be interested in this? Like Lounsbury House, like they should have a virtual day of wedding planning. Like it should be next level, put your best stuff on there, you know, build your know, like, and trust. So people go, Christ, I want to come there after because guess what? They just, oh, they were so lovely over there and they did all this stuff. Like, do that and you're like well that's a lot of work for no immediate payout well guess what this is our new reality and you got to do things like this right um and i'll talk to you about that so this just came i went to central my husband and i um are graduates at central we were college sweethearts and we've actually been married 25 years and anyone who knows me i'm crazy about my husband he's an awesome human being anyway that means it's not anything other than it's our 25th wedding anniversary and yes we are very young um, but they sent me this out yesterday just to let me know like what they're doing, um, things have been cleaned, what else, how else they're going to use, um, uh, they're going to use some of their housing for Yukon medical personnel. And, you know, they kept it really simple and they created a coronavirus page down here. Um, and said, you know, if you need more information, I, I liked this. I thought, you know, okay, this is a massive institution. They boiled it down and you keep it really simple. Um, and I, I think that's helpful. And people want to know exactly what's going on. You don't want to tell them every step of the day, you know, but you want to stay connected to them and you don't want to drop off, right? Um, so share pro social tips, right? Associate mm -hmm. your brand with goodness, right? you know, be of service, let them know how you or your service can help them. So like for you and your service industry, we're going to show some examples of people doing some really fun stuff um, and keeping their business alive and maybe even thriving, which I think is so cool. Um, so here's a pro social tip we did that was really popular, you know, just thanking people, like thanking all these people that are like helping us. Um, you know, just common sense stuff. You're welcome to come go on to my social and share my post. Like if you don't want to create anything, we did it, right? You know, we were really thoughtful in what we did. It's, you know, we're like, I want this, I want to do this, and you know. Um, so okay, so your next step is evaluate what your company can do right now. Okay. So one, are you supporting your employees? Are you supporting your customers? What can you do to pivot? So in order to survive right now, if your company is, is not getting business, you better freaking pivot, right? So what service you currently offer that you can adapt? That's your first starting point. So, um, and we're going to show examples. Or do you need to add a new service, right? Um, and then if you, can't add, if you can't adapt a service or add a new service, guess what? You might have to work on long-term projects or it might be in time for employee training. So, you know, I told you we have a three-year plan. Um, like I said, I'm a pretty serious businesswoman and I'm daughter of an entrepreneur who owns a major company. So uh, I grew up with business at my dinner conversation. So I'm really an unusual wellness provider. I didn't know that you should know everything about business. Um, so we have plan A and then we have actually plan B in, in this Corona, you know, uh, quarantine because we're working on current things, but then we're also simultaneously working on some, some long-term projects. And we've already identified that we're going to start shifting into some of these long-term projects um, because they are actually huge deals. Um, and it's really, really important. And, um, and in my business, I'm going to be in these major, major documentaries where they expect over 20 million viewers. And that's going to happen regardless of Corona. And I still need to have those systems in place, regardless of whether income is currently coming in right now or not. I cannot ignore that. Otherwise, on my long-term goals, 
it would be foolish of me not to have these things ready and prepared for them. So that's my example. I'm, ha I, I, you know, I, you know, I'm here to just give information. You need to think about yourself. What are, what are your current goals? What are your long-term goals? So think about what service you could currently adapt or do you need to adapt? We're going to go over some. So brainstorm ideas with your employees, right? Ask your community. Like, ask them, like, what do you need right now, you know, um, and, and do it in creative ways, too. Like, you know, if I offered um, a craft box, wh who would be interested? Like, what do you want to see in there? Like, survey your people. They'll tell you exactly what they want, you know. Is $20 reasonable, you know? Um, and I always like to give customers opportunities to help the community. Um, so, you know, like we're going to show you an example of um, a pizza place that's partnering with others for good and then offering value. So always offer value. Now's the time. What kind of specials can you do? Boy, what? Guess what? You better offer some specials if you're offering stuff. Um, and it doesn't mean you're giving, you know, doing it completely and not making money on it. I don't want you to give stuff away. We want you to offer a special that is value. Maybe there's something you could do to add to it doesn't really cost you much or nothing at all that could bring it to the next level. So here's something we're doing. We're doing um, a chill challenge all next week. It's free. It's a private Facebook group. And um, I made all these funny little videos because I think I'm really funny. And it's one of the reasons why people like me is just that I'm totally normal, <laughs> not like your typical psychologist. I'm also an encyclopedia. So I know all this stuff, but then I'm really funny. Um, I'm missing all my friends at work because we always are laughing and dancing together. And um, So we're doing this chill challenge. And in the chill challenge, oh, I can actually see this. Um, so in the chill challenge, we're offering all this free stuff, like, you know, how to tamp down anxiety, daily exercise. Like, it's what my tribe wants to have. Um, and we're giving away $3,000 worth of, of Prizes. So we're giving away some good stuff as an encouragement, um, but that's what works for my tribe. It is not for everybody else. Um, so let me try. Hold on. When I open that, it won't let me. Hold on. Okay. So I'm not going to go into all of these. Oh, hold on. We're going to do this one. This is a great one. Planet Pizza in Norwalk. I don't know if they're doing this at other places. They have come up with some awesome ways to keep their business going. So here they're teaming up with another organization and they're, they're, get, they're advertising. Basically, they're, they're now partnering with their buddies and they're offering, besides pizza, different types of things and their delivery drivers are delivering. But another organization is paying for it. So... Um, so you can donate a meal to first responders. You get social media on it. And guess what? Planet, Planet Pizza is getting paid. So um, you all show this. They did this with a realty company. So they give a shout out to the realty company. The realty company is paying for it. They're getting promotion. They're getting known for their social goodness. And Planet Pizza is still making a boatload of money. Because guess what? There's a lot of people who are working at the hospital. So love this. And they're very active on social. And I learned about it because somebody told me, my God, what a great idea. How sweet is that? And then we were like, wait, this is not only sweet, but they're making money. Like they're capitalizing on what's going on. This is from Forbes. And I would encourage you to look at this. It's about how entrepreneurs are pivoting in their businesses during crisis right now. Um, top 10 tips. Um, and a lot of what we said, but, you know, just different things, even networking right now. Like, I have people who um, have, are doing networking meetings uh, virtually. I mean, people are there, right? If you can't make a sale, be ready to make your sale for the next one, right? So adapting your current systems. We're going to talk about some cool examples like distilleries. You know, these are things you've heard about. Companies making um, masks or uh, family. We're going to do this, show this, the photographer taking family portrait. So restaurants making um food boxes, you know, craft places, making craft kits, you know, um, services going virtually. Everything you do right now has to be easy. 
you got to think about your consumer. They don't want to leave the house. They want to have accessibility. People are freaking bored right now. They're, they're looking at their four walls. Um, they might be anxious. So think about what you can offer to support what people are feeling and what they actually physically need right now. Like I couldn't get, we, we only eat like organic foods. I, I never have, I always have, like it's been a million years and I couldn't get in my delivery, like my organic chicken. I don't know who you are like hoarding right now, but I grew up like I'm Italian. You always have three months of food in your house. So I had an order from, I tried to get local. She told me it was like at least eight weeks and I had an order from an online place. And I was like, this is actually so genius. It's just like click, click, click. It's organic, comes to my house. Yes, I have to wait three weeks for it, but that's okay because I got plenty of food. I just want to have um, those things because my kids are used to it. Um, and like right now, are, is there anything anybody's doing right now to adapt their current system? I would love to hear about it because it will actually show up um, right now that they're adapting or struggling with an idea to adapt you know, pop it in the chat because we can brainstorm about it. And that's, this is an opportunity for us to do that, to figure out what else we can do. Right. So this is the photographer that started, this is a really fun picture. So <laughs> she started doing photography outside porch photography. And, you know, here they did the star Wars, everybody's in their jammy, the parents are drinking you know, a little over the top, but is great. And she's been super busy. She pivoted. She adapted her current business. Um, here's the Planet Pizza again. They're showing everybody on social. They're Keeler Williams um, in Norwalk made the donation. They give a shout out to Keeler Williams. And guess what? Keeler Williams is paying for the pizza. The first responders are getting it. Love this. This is so smart. Um, you know, show your business in action, even if you are providing some kind of service virtually right now, like they want to see what it looks like, demystify it. This is all new to people. People are like getting into their groove um, on Zoom and whatnot um, and different things. So, you know, what can you do? So develop your plan. <clears throat> are you going to adapt your service and offer a product? Do you need a totally new, new service or are you doing some kind of combination? Um, what you're going to need is clear goals. You have to change your business in that, you know, one of the things that I do in my business is, you know, I train people so that they are empowered to be decision makers. So I am a leader. I'm not a micromanager. So this is often really hard. Most people lead by micromanaging and they say that I don't want to because my employees are this, that, and the other thing, but you do that by training them. So when you train your employees really well and you have SOP, standard operating procedures in place, they're going to be able to make decisions when you're not around. And um, this is a time that if you can't offer a service, guess what? You should do a lot of things. Um, do you need a virtual platform? We already talked about employee training, but you might need to add a service right now. Like maybe you need to hire a digital company. Like maybe you need to hire an executive assistant. I don't know. <laughs> Some of you are actually looking for employees at this time. Um, so, and then, you know, think about whatever it is you decide. Is it a realistic timeline, right? You're offering a whole new service. So, you know, we already were in development to do home-based neurofeedback. And I could have rushed and got that into place. No, mm -mm, because um, it has got a lot of complexity. And I have an amazing reputation and I'm not going to risk it for a few extra dollars. So we, it already was supposed to go. We were starting to change, to um, implement it and beta test it in March. So we're just continuing it along. If it happens, it happens. We're not rushing it at all, at all. So, and in fact, it almost got kind of pushed to the side because we have other things going on. So think about your timeline. Like we were like, should we try to get this ready in two weeks? And I was like, this is the dumbest thing I ever heard. And I listened to my employees because they were like, this is, this is going to be nothing but trouble and a headache, you know? So, okay. So execute your plan. So I mentioned a standard operating procedure. I'm obsessed with standard operating procedures. So, you know, things need to have clear steps. 
you know, and you might say like, you know, oh, I only have two or three people, whatever. No, guess what? You spend a lot of time re-explaining things. If you have just a simple, you know, get into your Google Sheets and um, make a simple document that says step one, step two, step three. And then you always can modify it as you do things. Get really clear with your employees. You're not physically together, a lot of you. And so you're gonna miss a lot of nuances and then they're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get frustrated and guess what? You're gonna provide crappy customer service. And right now your customer service needs to be like amazing. So um, our motto here at Dr. Roseanne Associates is, is that, and I say it every day, is that we treat everybody like it's the worst day they ever had. So anybody who's ever come here feels the love, because guess what, it's real. We really love our peace. So, um, okay, how are you gonna promote whatever you're gonna offer? Is it, you gotta email your peeps, you gotta get out on social. Are you doing ads? Do you even know how to do ads? <laughs> you might need to hire somebody, right, short term. There's people out there right now. And then whatever plan you have, are you you got to constantly evaluate is it working like so we're having these daily meetings and we're like okay we were doing this and that is really sucking nobody nobody's looking at it what do we need to do and it kind of sucks because you know we're this place where anything we do people always seem to come and resonate right because because people it's bad out there with mental health prior to coronavirus um and so we're like putting all this work and the ROI is really low. And it might be really low right now and it might come back later, right? Um, you have to have strong communication with both your employees and your, your people getting your service and adapt, adapt, change, try again, do what it is. It doesn't mean you're being like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try it for a week and I'm gonna throw it out. I'm not saying that, I'm saying, think about what you can adapt, what new service, Really give it an honest go, get all hands on deck, try to do it the best way you can, and then decide, like, is this something that is a service that is going to bring the immediate monetization, or is it later? So, you know, we're doing a mix of both, but I'm going to be honest, the majority of what we're doing in my business is for later, um, because we always are connecting with our tribe. So this is nothing new. Our tribe is not, we're just giving them even more value right now. Um, so, you know, in the end, this is all about, you know, reaching your employees and connecting with them and making your goal. Um, you know, your message has to be so on board. It has to be so thoughtful. It has to support them. It has to be really authentic. <laughs> um, you know, your employees are doing what they can to support your goals. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so critical to be so clear with them with SOPs. Um, updating them with changes, um, you know, we use Basecamp, you know, people are using Slack for the first time. I wouldn't jump into Asana. There's all different things that are there. Um, and, you know, the more employees you have, the harder it is to communicate. Like the days of the chain link emails are over. Um, I can't say how much like even Basecamp has helped us. We always, we're a real fun bunch. I don't hire anybody unless they're fun. And it's one of the key characteristics. And um, so we post all these funny memes in our base camp. Um, we, we always sing when we're together. So like I got my nine-year-old to do a dance to like one of the songs we always do. And we posted it in there. It's really fun. And because um, it's important to laugh a little bit, we're all having a lot of stress. Um, but you know, and, and when you're so clear on your goals, your employees are much more likely to believe in them and understand in your mission and you're going to magnetize and attract people. So maybe this is really a lesson for people to get super tight on their mission. Um, because you know, this is what you need to do. Maybe your business was lacking in that. And, you know, I always say like, do your best practice a little self-forgiveness. You are stressed. Don't live there. Um, you can join my chill challenge if you want to have different ways to de-stress. You know, try and then try again. Um, and that's our, you just log on for our Facebook group. But I, I want to hear what people, you know, have to say. Um, I can see some questions in here um, about, you know, training, 
um, you know, and, and different. Does anybody have, you know, so the Lounsbury house, you should have a rockin' virtual bride show and get your vendors in there and try to get your vendors to offer like amazing value. Um, could you offer a special, you know, these kind of things. Does anybody have any questions or like a problem? This is a great time for us to problem solve. I have no idea what time it is. Um, is any ideas of things that they need help with right now um, is an opportunity for us to problem solve together. Together, You don't need to be embarrassed. I won't say your name. Um, <laughs> but um, I hope, you know, can, is there any comments in the chat? Even if you want to say like, this is helpful. I, you gave me an idea. Um, Kim, any, any feedback or things, you know, you, you know, you're the oh. head of the chamber. Yeah, no, this is this has been very helpful. And I had a, a comment that I had made about the value of training right now, because you think of that as something kind of, it, it'd be easy to put that in the bucket of once we're done with this, we're going to do this and then we're going to train. But that sends such a message of intention that we're doing this now to build and I know for you know an employee there's a completely different mindset as far as working through a difficulty and then we're gonna do this versus okay am I gonna have a job and in you know you're not even thinking past this it's like you're so focused on the you know kind of that drop dead date that you're not even you can't put your best thoughts in it so that I I just love the idea of the the training for its own value, but the message that that sends. Yeah. Um, and, you know, training is always important. And you're right. We sort of put it on the side um, like a wish, right? When I'm not so busy with this, right? And right. Um, I work 100 hours a week because I literally have a million things going on. Like, I have to say no to a lot of really cool opportunities all the time because I have to be like, wait, we have our center and I love my peeps and I don't want to shortchange them. And, you know, um, but I also have this big goal. Like, I literally am going to change the way we, you know, view and treat children's mental health. It's already happening and it's going to happen. We um, got a question. Oh, I'm sorry. So, but you have to do employee training. Like in, right. in this might be a time to do it. So great question about nonprofits. Like how does nonprofits yes. fit on this? And um, we the have fundraising to, so critical and so all the critical. gilas, all the everything. So you need to partner with other organizations. So like right now, you know, you need to find another company or an influencer who has a big following. Um, and you might already have somebody in your network, like write down 15 to 20 people you're connected with that has a large following um, and see if they would partner with you to do an event right now. So a lot of my friends are like super famous wellness people. And so they're actually partnering with other organizations like um, to do a dance a -thon or a PJ party or something else that becomes a fundraiser for your organization and um you know gun violence in our area is like you know we're like ground zero with sandy hook and you know see what you can do to partner with an influencer or somebody else to do a really fun event for families that's easy do it you can do it and there's other people that would want to do it and, and you start with your 15 to 20 people in your network that you think could potentially connect you um, so I hope, does that resonate with you? Hopefully, yeah, so yes, okay, great. So I love that, I look forward. Right. Tag me on social when you do it. Cause I totally, that's gonna be awesome. Um, great. Yeah, and then, um, okay, so, and then I, you know, I know we have um, Ron from the Worcester, you know, um, Hollow Cafe, you know, same kind of things that the pizza place is doing, do it, Ron. Like, see what you can do he's, for... He's done a wonderful... He's got yeah. a, a project going, and it's had a big public response. He's yeah. done a good job with and, that. And, you know, we're all ritual business owners. What can we do to amplify each other? Like, what can we do to help each other on social? Like, 
Right. That's a really cool thing to be able to do. Like I do that with my group of friends. Um, it doesn't mean every day, but like, you know, I have multiple groups where we um, have our own like Instagram group and then like we post in there, you know, Hey, you know, can you do this um, for me? Can you share this? I mean, even those kind of things, we should be liking on and commenting on each other's posts. If you can't afford to do Facebook ads right now, which are at a record cheap rate, um, you need to get organic engagement. So create engagement on your posts um, by having other people in this community, you know, share on it and whatnot. Um, I hope everybody hops on to, you know, anybody who hops onto my Instagram or likes my Facebook, I can see it and I'll like you back. We should all be doing that for each other and commenting because that's really helpful. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So what, what is a local business banded together? Oh, Richfield strong t-shirts, proceeds going to hospital workers, you know, love that idea that, you know, as a Richfield, you know, community, um, you know, we can pick a nonprofit or it can go to the chamber. We can promote, um, you know, is there something on the chamber website that we can do to say like, hey, these are these businesses that are offering virtual services. These are offering packages right now. You know, here are restaurants that are doing things, you know, um, and then helping to push out that way. There's a lot of way that we can have these compounded relationships to help each other um, during this time. And hopefully they, it continues, you know, yeah. after. Roseanne, uh, Lounsbury House had a question. Sure. Where, what was their I question? I saw a hand raised. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's a hand raised. Did she pop it on here? Okay. I would love to leave the community with more positive messaging. Yes, it is depressing, which is why we decided to do a chill challenge. Um, oh, I love this. You created a virtual tour, invite uh, party planners and newly engaged couples. The community of a larger population seems trickier. Um... No, I just think, you know, here's what it is. Everybody is doom and gloom and brides are about new beginnings and love. <laughs> and who doesn't love like weddings and baby showers and happy events? I mean, you know, the first thing I'm going to do after this, I'm going back to get my massage and I'm going to also get a facial, facial with medicinal skin with Holly in town. You know, like <laughs> my nails are still, st are, are still on. These are my real nails, but the nail polish is like day 20. 26. I'm, I, the kid, I try to be very careful. Um, I'm joking because these are the things people are looking forward to. So I say to me, Lounsbury House, like give them what they need. Like brides don't want to be stuck in and thinking about it. Like they want to be planning and, and maybe you make a campaign that's like, guess what? There's, you know, like there's got to love, love overrules everything. There's your campaign, honey. And then, you know, say like we have a virtual event and, you know, give it to people because they want it no matter what they want their dreams. Like all these moms that are, you know, want to have babies and stuff right now too, you know, there's uh, an important thing. So, okay, there is a Q and A. Um, oh, any tips for suggesting using Zoom with public webinars? So, you know, so you have to have the webinar component to Zoom, um, not just the meeting. So this is a webinar. And, um, you know, it, it, what are you going to offer? You got it. Only way anybody's doing any kind of webinar right now is if it's free. So if you're doing something, what can you give away that's of, of value? You know, for me, this was about giving to my community because I've talked to so many business owners, um, including some of my super high power friends that were like stuck because of the anxiety, which is a normal response, but there's a way to get through that and it's by taking one step. And I, I really hope this was about taking one step, um, you know, and when you do that and you think about things differently, what you can do, whether A, you're gonna go forward, adapt your services, like we already had virtual counseling. So we, we just popped out of virtual counseling on that part of things, but we have this whole other side of business that, we had to shut down and that's okay for right now. Um, nobody wants to think this is lasting for three months, but it probably is. So what can you do? Is it, is it working and pivoting? Is it going back to training? Is it going back to business planning and really developing the next phase 
I mean, a lot of your businesses are going to be kicking butt after this. People all going to want to go to the diner. They're all going to want to get out. Ain't nobody going to stay in their house after this quarantine. So you should all be planning for that, right? Um, so, okay. So Lounsbury House is doing a yoga and meditation. Um, people love this. People are doing this. I would not hold off. I would jump into like a yoga and meditation event, you know, um, and you know, it's just, how does that fit with your business? How are you going to promote? Um, you still have to promote weddings. So you should have a day of a virtual wedding planning day after this. So you get people to know your brand by yoga and meditation, and then they're going to come and do your virtual, you know, virtual day. There's nothing wrong with, you know, doing that. I think brides would be excited to be seeing something other than old content. You just have to address it really clearly about Corona. Like, you know, okay, so you feel like you're trapped, but you know, love overrules everything and it's still okay to plan. And we're here. We want to just give it away um, for you. It's a good point about, you know, when you're trying to think, like she's saying, to have something that would be on the grounds, even if it's so doing the social distancing, would that be better to, to plan for May or June? My personal feeling is it's I would- not. Pardon? Right? Yeah, virtual only for that, right? Yeah. And yeah. anything that would be on the grounds, chances are no matter what date you put a pin in, you don't wanna have to then walk it back. It, it'd be somehow if there was a way to do it, you know, virtually, then that way you know you're going to be able to do it. And, and there so gonna... is a way to do it virtually, you know what I mean? So um, that's, that's important, you know, like there's lots of ways to do things virtually right now. You just have to have the accessibility of the technology. You know, right now it's Zoom. It's what I use um, because it's really the best thing out there. You know, I've done go-to meeting and things like that. and just doesn't have the same capacity. So you just got to make sure you I just got an idea. I'm going to so. email it <laughs> to you. I, I don't remember what the thing is, but I could see, I remember seeing something and it was talking, it was whatever the service was, it was a way to um, put backgrounds into like a Zoom chat. So you're not seeing my hammock, uh, you're seeing, but I was wondering, it's like if you did something and could give people, you know, JPEGs or whatever, I don't know how the technology is, but you could have everybody using a beautiful Lounsbury house background. So then when you're doing your call, you everybody is in the house and at the house. Um, you just click a bottom button, you click that arrow on the bottom left and it comes up and it says virtual background and you, you do it. It's really easy to do. Okay. It's super easy. See, I, I knew half of the thing. He's gotta tie it. <laughs> She's got to tie it to weddings. I don't want you spending all that effort if you're not, you know, like that's like, it could be like a day of, you know, future brides or new new brides, de-stress or whatever it is. I love that. But um, as far as any kind of branding, you know, for anything going forward, have those things and encourage people to use those backgrounds. Because then if I'm looking at a screen and there's you know, 20 other brides and we've all got, you know, the beautiful bridal suite behind us or we've got the staircase behind us or something yeah. like that. I think that kind of helps you see yourself at Lounsbury. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's a lot of other things you can do too. Like, you know, whatever it is, um, just like the nonprofit, you know, you need to do a fun event for fundraising. Like people would be happy to contribute to something like that other than the NRA owners, but um, <laughs> the NRA members, but like people are doing great stuff right now. Um, and, you know, look out there and, and see, you know, you could do family scavenger hunt, like, and have a winner and, you know, just like we're having a prize for the chill challenge. So I know what my people needed. They needed me and they needed me to be able to give them and have access to me. And that's a way to do it to support a lot of people at once. Like, you know, we launched a podcast during this time, the parent coffee talk, and we thought it was just going to be about Corona. And then I was like, we're going to just do a podcast all the time now. Like, because people want to hear me, they, they want to talk to me and I don't have time to talk to everybody. So, 
Right. Um, but every business is, you know, so I love it. You know, get out there, let people know what you're doing, package things, convenience, 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 um, and try to partner with other businesses. So Kim, it looks like we're going to have a section on the website, like what are services are offered right now? Yes. In quarantine. Um, so that, you know, we can, you know, help each other, you know? So, um, this has been a great conversation. Um, so much. And, uh, you know, please like feel free to email me. Um, I am working a million, I'm, I am working 18 to 19 hours a week, only through next week. And then I'm going to just get it down my normal hundred. So, um, and, uh, I had to cut out my two hour exercise routine, but, um, I, I can't do that anymore. I need it. So, um, but yeah, Amy, thank you. You're a hot ticket, Amy. So glad you're joined here. She's a super powerful businesswoman. Um, so, you know, lean on people and, and ask like, you know, for help. So this is a great, you know, opportunity for us to connect. And, you know, I am such a positive person. Like I only see positive things. Um, everybody can do this. I'm not saying it's easy, but you absolutely can do this. And I just, hope you thought of some different things and um i look forward to connecting with everybody on social because that's really where we need to be right now because everybody's yes. on social yes so lots of health and abundance for you all yeah, yeah. all right all be right. well everybody thank you take care and stay safe